What's going on guys? Evan the Dark Souls Enthusiast here, bringing another Dark Souls gameplay coming to you on the Xbox 360. This time we're going to do a sequence of invasions and duels in the kiln. Uh, start with two invasions in Anor Londo and finish up with some kiln duels. Uh, since this is the first, I guess, official PvP, uh, I guess PvP outing of this character, I am going to go ahead and sort of describe the character build um, at length. In the next video, I will post a finalized set of stats. Um, it's kind of an odd build. I made some custom tweaks and stuff with some leftover points I had. Just pretty standard affair. Most builds finish around 120. It's just some builds need the extra five levels to round out, which is why the cap is typically set around 125. Now, you'll probably be able to get into more PvP action if you stay around 120, but there's plenty at 125, so it's really not an issue. Um, You'll see we're starting with a little 3v1 battle in Orlando. These guys aren't very good. They clearly weren't um, PvP, and I think they were new to the game. Just a group of friends playing together on the same server, trying to fight their way through in Orlando. And, you know, that's cool. Um, in this match, I actually used Tranquil Walk of Peace, and that's because I had it on uh, an attunement slot just as an in-case kind of thing. Plus, I wanted to try it. I haven't actually been under the effects of it or used it since patch, at least not personally. And... I can confirm the spell is not nearly what it used to be. It's it's still a pretty lame pile of garbage, but uh, I don't think... Now it's easy to counter. It's just still ultra lame, so I'm going to stay away from that one. I'm not a huge fan of Tranquil Walk. One, because I don't think it's that powerful, but two, when it works, it just works way too well. When it doesn't work, it doesn't work at all. So, not, not the kind of spell I want to be rocking on my attunement slots anyway. So, kind of throwing Lightning Javelins player playing around. I know this guy can't win, and that's fine, you know, 3v1, they lost, it happens. Just goes to show you the advantage of having an actual PvP build as opposed to just having, like, PvE. But, as I was saying, um, <clears throat> a little introduction to my character build. I have a very tight weight requirement because I wanted, I wanted it that way, so, like, I can't do a lot of weapon swapping on in each match. I have to keep my weight below an S-stock weight, basically. I actually have 41 endurance. Uh, the character build is 50 vitality. 19 attunement, <clears throat> attunement, excuse me, um, 41 endurance, the extra point gave me just a little bit more encumbrance, probably not necessary, but I liked it, and I couldn't get my strength up to 16 for Avalyn with the remaining points I had, and I couldn't get my dexterity up to 16 for Dark Moonbow, so all in all, it just wasn't that great of a situation to be in, so I figured I could get a little extra damage with one faith, or just a little more life with one vitality, and I opted for the higher equip weight. Just made things a little easier. Plus, it worked out really well because it let me um, actually have enough weight to equip a parrying dagger in my offhand. And a parrying dagger or a target shield, anything with the quick parry speed is really important to this kind of character build because um, I main an S stock, and that's a rapier, of course, as you've seen me use in my other videos. And it's it's an awkward choice for PvP because it's a divine uh, it's a divine rapier, divine S stock rather, which is of the rapier class, the straight swords piercing sword rather and it would have been probably better um, just to do like a plus 15 weapon than dark moon blade it or something to that effect and I figured that once I used it the S stock because it's divine it has magical damage and physical damage so you have to go through two different defenses um, if you're not real familiar with PvP and you don't know exactly how that works defense um, takes into account two values you have two kinds of damage so if you're doing Lightning and physical, it counts the lightning resistance and the physical defense. So it really cuts down on your damage. So actually raw damage is better than split damage, which is fine. Um, but unfortunately, the way scaling works in this game, um, I did a little calculations on damage. I'd actually do more damage with just a Chaos S stock with like 30 humanity than I would with my Divine S stock. But I'm going to go ahead and stick with the Divine S stock because I like it. And really, Divine... Lightning, it really doesn't matter what you put on your S stock in that. They do crap damage unless you do a backstab or a counter. Unfortunately, the disadvantage of the S stock is there's absolutely no way for you to like hit stun somebody with it because even with zero poise, you won't hit stun anybody. <coughs> Excuse me. So as a result, you pretty much have to do backstabs or you have to slowly peck them to death. And if they decide they want a flask or something like that, it just really... Uh, really puts a damper on your plan, so it's really a backstab intensive weapon, so that's why I went ahead and took my strength up to 14 so that I could carry the um, 
the scythe so I can use Dark Moon Blade. Now I don't have a whole lot of points in Dexterity, so the scythe isn't going to do a whole lot of damage, but Dark Moon Blade, of course, gets more powerful with faith points, so I think it'll still do a sizable amount of damage, plus it's going to look really cool, and that's actually a factor for me right now. This guy is uh, the Dark Anorlando Warrior. I invaded this guy here maybe seven or eight times, and I lost probably all but two matches, and he has a fully reinforced Estus Flask, and you can see his build right there. It's it's a tough, he's a tough cookie, because he understands he's in Dark Anorlando and the vision's crappy, and he will just run behind crap uh, to try to break your lock on so he can go heal. And you'll see this guy demonstrate why Wrath of Gods isn't overpowered. You can roll right through it. You just have to get a little practice. Just like the Black Knight's Great Axe. Once you understand how the weapons work, a lot of them that seem overpowered really aren't. Like, Black Knight's Great Axe? Pretty fair. Oh, by the way, he messaged me and claimed that defeat was due to lag. Uh, that's the last of the invasions I have saved on my hard drive. I deleted the rest because they were uh, just a lot of invasions against people that couldn't really fight back, and that's not really the kind of stuff I want to upload, at least not right now. So, here are some kiln duels. I didn't really mean to be standing behind that person, but it's kind of what happened. Uh, this guy invaded me a couple times. I don't think he won very much, but that's okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. I need to get better about attacking people when they buff their weapon. I'm not sure what the etiquette is, like if you're supposed to leave people alone while they buff their weapon, but Dark Moon Blade's so powerful that I think from now on, if they try to buff before they bow, I'm just going to attack. I'm not sure if that's like the standard or not, but it's what's going to happen. Typically, I always bow and stuff like that, but I guess if you're going to try to pre-buff first, which isn't very common when people do, I'm just going to attack. Um, I try to parry him there, but I screw up my parrying time, and then he just beat me down. This guy's a pretty honorable guy. He's using the Dark Moon, uh, I think it's an Uji Katana or Alito, I can't really tell. It's hard for me to recognize weapons once the buffs are. Either way though, um, no complaints here, pretty decent duel. I'm trying to get a backstab in. I could consider a lag stab, uh, for those of you not familiar with the lag stab strategy, basically you run at your opponent, uh, and you try to pass them on the right side where the weapon is typically, and then you just Keep your lock on, and as you turn behind them, it'll jerk your camera so you can backstab them. That's the easiest way to backstab. It's pretty common. Most people know about it, so when your opponent knows about it, they run backwards when you run towards them. That way that doesn't happen. Or they just run right back at you and go try to backstab each other. Um, with an S-stock, because my damage is so low, I'm pretty much forced into a backstab or bust kind of scenario, which is the only thing I don't like about Ellie as a character. Uh, I either pretty much have to backstab, switch to a secondary weapon, or wrath people to kill them. Which just doesn't seem... That doesn't seem ideal. I almost want to try, like, a bandit's dagger, or something like that, because it would still have a huge backstab modifier, but it would have the added advantage of actually, um... actually doing bleed, so you could hammer someone out with bleed and get them to bleed out. There's one of those weird backstabs, um... It is fair, it's just kind of weird how backstabs show up sometimes, due to the angles on which you can get them. I don't like how in Dark Souls you can actually backstab during rolls. It, it makes it a huge backstab fest, which is why S-Stocks and things like that are such a powerful weapon. When so many people are trying to flask, having the ability to. And that that's a lag stab, by the way. I just ran right at him and went to his right, and the next thing I know is behind him backstabbing. This is obviously my first um, commentary for how to PvP and stuff like that. And I'll just... I'll discuss techniques in later videos, but just trying to give you an overview of where this character stands. Um, the equipment loadout is Gargoyle Helm, Paladin Armor, um, I believe Paladin Boots. It's not it's not the optimal item setup. It, it took um, appearance into consideration. In the next video, I will actually upload a clip of my character from the stats screen and then the equipment screen, because it'd probably be better to show you guys that way than verbally describe it, but I can't say that everything was picked for the sake of appearance uh, for the most part. I don't really like the Gargoyle Helm that much, but it was kind of selected due to its perceived rarity, and also the fact that it looks kind of cool. I prefer the Viking Helm, but it didn't fit into my weight class very well. The Viking Helm, of course, you get from Vomitos. I originally intended to wear the Dust Crown for Wrath Spams, using Wraths, but eh, it wasn't a big hit here on YouTube, and while I still use Wrath of Gods as liberally, I I think using, having you played against it a lot now too, I think using the crown and using the ring of the firstborn for super wraths, viable strategy, but it just, I don't know, feels kind of cheesy. Because then again with this character, it seems to be 
all about cheese. Um, it's either backstab fest or um, wrath fest, so that's kind of unfortunate. You know, I still enjoy it though. Um, PvP on this game is a blast. It's not a perfect system. The lag and the imbalances kind of hurt it, but still a lot of fun. I've got probably two or three more videos worth of save duels in the kiln. Then I'm going to have to get through New Game Plus right quick so that I can get another stack of Wrath of Gods. Um, I think if you're Faith Caster, carrying six is the standard. You know, Ellie really is intended as a Faith Caster, but she kind of winded up with like the Hornet's Ring backstab plan just because the s stock is really only good for backstabs and counters. So I need to, there's a lot of things I need to work on in PvP on this character. I'm not real sure what happened there. Um, it looked like I was backstabbing him, but maybe he was backstabbing me. Either way, it looks like I fell to oblivion, so. If anyone knows what happened there, I mean, it's clearly like a little bit of a glitch, but does that happen if you die in combat? Does anybody know? <laughs> knows. Does anybody know? I'm, I'm not real sure. Anyway, a little fair warning when uh, these PvP videos, I have absolutely no credentials whatsoever. I am in no way like a pro pvp -er. I just enjoy a little player versus player, and it's really all there is to it. There's another lag stab. Once again with the s stock, even when you charge in and, you know, do your lunging attack, which actually has a fair bit of damage because it'll stab him twice, it doesn't really work. <laughs> which is unfortunate, but it just doesn't really work because they have, um... Yes, you know. <laughs> Sorry, I'm stumbling with my words. It doesn't really work when you stab with the s because it cannot hit stun them. It, they cannot be hit stunned by a rapier. No rapier that I've used has ever hit stunned an enemy, which is really unfortunate. Now I screw up here and I pull the Black Knight. Of course, he went behind the Black Knights to heal, and that's... I guess that's using the environment to your advantage. I think it's kind of a cheesy thing to do, but you know, whatever. It's my fault for not killing the Black Knights beforehand. So now I have to deal with him and his Black Knight. And, that's like an actual issue, because the Black Knights are fairly dangerous opponents. This is where I wish I had another stack of Wraths. I only have three at the time of this video. Um, if I had six, I'd probably just walk up to the Black Knight and just Wrath spam him over and over. You'll see the Black Phantom in the distance is not, er, not only buffing their blade, but first they tried to um, throw some, S some Lloyd's Talismans on me to prevent me from healing. I don't really use this very much. I didn't intend to heal. I don't know what he thinks I'm going to heal. I'm at full life. <laughs> Guess he's afraid I'm gonna start mashing flask because he um, got a phantom to help him. And I probably would, but he didn't even get me with the talismans anyway. And right now he's two up in my grill for me to safely heal. Then the black knight comes in and plows me. Here's the issue when you're using buff weapons as your primary strategy: you can't have more than one copy of a covenant miracle, so there's only one dark moon blade. So if someone like me runs around and stays alive and runs out dark moon blade, you have to have a secondary weapon to fall back on. This guy doesn't seem to, um, he has other buffs it looks like, but that's not really, I think, what you want to have. You want to have probably a Chaos weapon, because Chaos does the most elemental damage if you have 30 plus your manage, but you're PvP and you probably do. So he should probably consider, um, changing that, but it's not a big deal, you know, whatever. His character can do what he wants, I'm just throwing that out there that I think that he would benefit greatly from. I missed a backstab opportunity there, but I get this one. He would most likely benefit greatly from having some kind of secondary weapon he can swap to when his buffs run out. The other thing about the S-Talk is when people get desperate, which only really bad players do, when they get desperate and start chasing you around, um, uh, you try to pop your enemy and kill there. You can just turtle behind your shield, poke from behind the shield, and it actually works fairly well. The damage will be higher be nice. I really should consider getting like a chaos weapon secondary. Anyway, guys, that's uh, the end of this set of PvPs, any of the 15-minute mark. Uh, thank you guys for watching, and I'll try to bring you more footage as soon as I can with more character builds as well. I'm working on getting two or three extra carrier characters into the kiln without using the glitch, doing it the hard way. All right, guys, thanks for watching, and uh, hope to see you next time.